Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is December 28th, 2013. Right, I'm here making a video with a runny nose. Now I'm expecting 2014 to be the year of Bitcoin. Right, some would argue that 2013 is. While investors have made a lot of money, I think Bitcoin hits the mainstream this year, right? 2014, the coming year. But in boxing, what might be the fight of the year is currently being discussed among boxing insiders. Within a few days, we may hear that Miguel Cotto will fight for the middleweight title against middleweight champion Sergio Martinez. Now, understand, <clears throat> when videos like this one are made six months before the scheduled fight date, and they're discussing a fight in June of 2014, understand that I don't have the benefit of an established betting line. Right? I don't know at what odds the casinos will be offering this fight. This video is really more of a boxing video than it is a gambling video, but we're going to talk about the likely winner of the fight and the reasons why. Okay, Just understand that right now, though, I don't have the benefit of knowing even who's favored in the fight, and right now it's an open question. Because even though Sergio Martinez is the historically heavier man, right, middleweight champion, fighting a 154-pounder, he's coming off of a second surgery on his knee. And the public is skeptical about him because he has been knocked down in some recent fights. Right, the uh, Chavez Jr. fight, the Murray fight, I believe the Macklin fight as well. Um, so given his inactivity and his surgery and the public turning against him, there is a possibility that the casinos might favor Cotto. Well, let's talk about the fight. In my opinion... The winner of this fight is going to be Sergio Martinez. He's the guy I like here. If I were betting the fight, I would take Martinez to win hedged with Cotto by knockout. Let's talk about why. Understand, even though Cotto fights out of an orthodox stance, this is a fight between two southpaws. Right, Cotto can move around the ring as well as he wants to, now that he's with Freddie Roach, who has gotten his legs back in the mix. But Cotto is really a predominantly one-handed fighter, and that punch is his left. And it's not his left jab, it's his left hook. When Cotto's on his game, he's able to throw left hooks to the head, but especially the body to destabilize an opponent. For Cotto at his best, I suggest you take a look at the tape of Cotto against Carlos Quintana from a few years ago. But the storm clouds are all around. The question you need to be asking yourself is, how does Cotto do against Southpaws? And the answer is not well years ago, and in my opinion, it still matters. He fought Zab Judah, a fight I encourage everyone here to watch from start to finish. The CompuBots numbers indicate 
that Zab Judah in that fight landed 57% of his power punches on Miguel Cotto. 57%. That's very high, especially in an elite boxing match involving world-class fighters. Now, when you see the tape, you're going to see that Cotto had a problem with Judah's hand speed. Now, I know I've been having a several-year argument here online with some um, of my subscribers because, in my opinion, one of the keys to that fight, the reason why it turned out the way it did, was because the referee in that fight allowed Cotto to get away with some key low blows. In my opinion, he couldn't handle Zab Judah's hand speed. Right? He had a problem with Judah's southpaw stance. He certainly didn't do a good job of blocking Judah's power punches. When he got in trouble, he went low. Multiple times. It changed the fight. Judah also <clears throat> had a stamina problem. Judah back then wasn't as focused as he is now. That resulted in Judah running out of gas in the 11th round and getting stopped after getting dropped to the canvas earlier. But, and I know I'm a voice of the wilderness here, one wonders whether Judah would have been dropped to the canvas if Cotto hadn't landed some choice low blows. Let's talk about another fight with a southpaw, right? Miguel Cotto against Austin Trout. You know, Austin Trout in that fight, and that's a recent fight, that's just two fights ago, landed 45% of his power punches. Right, Trout? A southpaw, not really a power puncher, but yet he was able to throw 430 power punches on Miguel Cotto and land 192 of them. By contrast, in that fight, Cotto only landed 34% of his power punches, right? After all these years, from Zab Judah to Trout, Cotto has yet to find a way to stop an opponent from landing a heavy dosage of power punches when that opponent is a southpaw, right? There's another fight you should look at, and that fight involves southpaw Manny Pacquiao. The pattern held. Cotto had a huge problem stopping Pacquiao from landing a large percentage of power punches. Now, I'm going to disagree with some big names in the sport here. I've uh, read interviews of Abel Sanchez, Janady Golovkin's trainer, and Carlos Molina, one of the reigning 154-pound champions, about this upcoming fight. Abel Sanchez, in particular, says that neither guy's a big guy. That Sergio Martinez is really a 154-pounder. And that Sergio Martinez really isn't a big puncher. Right? Carlos Molina makes a contention that Sergio Martinez starts fast, but then fades in fights. Let's tackle both of these canards, because I believe they're just that. You know, Sergio Martinez is really a puncher. Don't confuse his dignified, soft-spoken, out-of-the-ring persona with who he is in the ring. Right? He's the first guy to stop Serge in Zurich. By stop, I mean knock out. He's the first guy to stop Paul Williams. Right? I mean, 
That's who he is. You saw him against Matthew Macklin. He knocked Macklin down twice. He's the first guy to stop Darren Barker. Right? Understand these guys hadn't been stopped before. Sergio Martinez is the fighter who ended those trends. Right? He's very much a puncher. Dare I say, in my opinion, he's the heavier puncher in this fight. It's true <clears throat> that Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. went the distance with him, as did Martin Murray. But what I want you to do is to go back and look at those fights. Look at the size of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who was really a light heavyweight fighting a middleweight. Right? Don't go by his weight at the weigh-in. Go by his weight on the night of the fight. Right? He's a much bigger man than Miguel Cotto. Much bigger man. Also, take a look at the Martin Murray fight. Murray doesn't even start fighting until something like the midway point of the fight, like the fourth round or fifth round. Right? Murray was thinking defense first. Survival first. Right? In fights where guys are foolish enough to actually try to trade with Sergio Martinez. Martinez lands power shots. Kermit Cintron <coughs> was down against Sergio Martinez. If Sergio Martinez carried himself out of the ring like Mike Tyson, he'd be viewed as a knockout puncher. Because quite frankly, that's the kind of punch that he has. Also, unlike Cotto, who's one-handed, Martinez is two-handed. Martinez can knock you out with either hand. I know it shakes up some people when I say that Martinez is on the verge of putting his face on the Mount Rushmore of the middleweight division. This guy is, quite frankly, one of the best fighters of our time. As I like to say, the only other guys in middleweight, in my opinion, on Mount Rushmore are Monzone, Hagler, and Hopkins. Right now, those guys held the belt longer than Martinez has. Right? Martinez, though, if he continues and if he does as well in this fight as I think he's going to, I think people are going to start to realize that this guy who beat Chavez when he was officially unbeaten, who beat Barker when he was officially unbeaten, who knocked out Paul Williams at a time when we were calling Williams the most feared man in boxing. Right? This guy certainly belongs there. By the way, Martin Murray, his last fight, he was also unbeaten when Martinez beat him. Right? Martinez is not taking easy fights. He's taking tough fights and he's winning them. Now let's, so to those who believe that he doesn't have a big punch, just tell me what dropped Serge Eisen Zurich multiple times? What dropped Darren Barker? What dropped Paul Williams? You know, let's get real. What dropped Kermit Sintra? Right? Now for those who believe that Sergio Martinez fades in fights. Right? I'd like to know where they got that from. Let's look at his last fight. You would imagine time-wise that's the most relevant fight. It's close against Martin Murray. Murray does take the middle rounds. Right? It's close against Martin Murray. 
Then we get to the championship rounds. Now this is the last fight Sergio Martinez fought. Doesn't Martinez win the championship rounds? Isn't it Martinez who finishes strong in that fight to win the fight? That's his last fight. Where's the evidence that he fades at the end of fights? Let's talk about the Chavez Jr. fight, because I'm sure there are many right now who are nodding their heads and saying, hey, what about Chavez Jr.? Wasn't he on the canvas in that 12th round? Well, what about the 11th round? Let me just tell you, did you know that I believe Sergio Martinez in his career <coughs> has never thrown more punches than he did in the 11th round of his fight against Chavez Jr.? Folks, it's a strong finish. He gets caught in the 12th round of a fight he's thoroughly dominating after emptying the gun in the 11th round. This isn't a lack of stamina. This is a guy throwing a lot of punches late and then getting caught by an elite puncher, a light heavyweight masquerading as a middleweight in the last round of the fight. So, I don't buy the Martinez doesn't finish strong. Wasn't his problem against Matthew Macklin in an earlier fight, the start of the fight. We know who finished that fight strong. Didn't Martinez slowly take over that fight? Wasn't it Macklin hitting the canvas late in that fight? So I understand Martinez is now in his late 30s. He was late to the game of boxing on the front end. Look at the early part of his career. And he's in magnificent shape. Now the valid criticism of Martinez, not really criticism but concern, is the fact that he has had multiple surgeries recently. Right? If you're looking at his stamina, his actual stamina, and not his age, you're not worried about the fact that he's 37. But what you might be worried about is ring rust. It happens. And the idea that that knee injury, that knee that required multiple surgeries, required a surgery after the Murray fight, might not be as good as it was. I'll accept that criticism as valid. But Sergio Martinez is not washed up by a long shot. You want to know how he challenges himself? Look no further than the last two fights. He took on unbeaten fighters. Think about it. And he won both fights. Now I know as people look at the records, they'll see that Martinez has been down in fights. There's no question he's down hard against Chavez Jr. That's a legitimate knockdown, no question about it. But these other knockdowns, when he hit the canvas in the first fight against Paul Williams. When he hit the canvas against Kelly Pavlin. When he hit the canvas against Martin Murray. These knockdowns sound more devastating than they in fact are. Martinez has a style where he's bouncing, bent at the waist. He's bouncing and he's moving around the ring. He's a guy who sometimes gets too comfortable in the ring. So if you look through his career, yes, he's been down a few times. But most of these knockdowns are flash knockdowns. Most of these knockdowns have more to do with Martinez's balance than they do with Martinez losing consciousness, getting caught with punches, and being hurt on the canvas. 
In fact, most of the time that Martinez hits the canvas, he looks at the referee, he's completely lucid, he's able to pop back up. It's only the Chavez Jr. knockdown that really should have you with a raised eyebrow. Let me also point out, too, the Kelly Pavlik fight. That's another fight where Martinez dominated the later rounds. Right? What Martinez, in my opinion, does is he paces himself. He starts, okay, except for the Matthew Macklin fight. In the middle rounds, he'll take his foot off the gas a little bit. Then he picks it back up in the last third of the fight. That doesn't show a lack of stamina. That shows a fighter pacing himself. Let's also talk about just the logistics of this fight. Martinez, the taller fighter, is able to hide his body. <clears throat> I believe because Martinez bends at the waist, Cotto won't be able to find Martinez's body. Keep in mind, too, because Martinez is a southpaw, Cotto's left hook is not going to surprise him as much as it would a right-handed fighter. Right? Martinez can block Cotto's left hand up top. While Cotto moves a lot better now that he's with Freddie Roach than he did in, let's say, the Austin Trout fight. Understand that Martinez moves very well, right? Cotto won't be able to just come up and corner Martinez. So in my opinion, this is a fight between two guys. One's bigger than the other. Martinez is bigger than Cotto. One hits harder than the other. I know that's going to be the controversial line from this video, but one hits harder than the other, and that's Martinez, who hits harder than Cotto, in my opinion, certainly with his offhand, right? Certainly with his right hand, Martinez hits harder than Cotto, right? We have a guy who has handled southpaws in the past. Look at Martinez against Paul Williams, right? The first fight is close. The second fight ends on a stoppage, right? Martinez has handled a high-volume problem southpaw. Look at Cotto's history against southpaws. The biggest southpaw fights he had, Zab Judah, right? He gets the knockout, but the copy box numbers don't look that good. Manny Pacquiao, he gets stopped. Austin Trout, he gets dominated. Right then, of course, think about their recent records. If you're out there criticizing Sergio Martinez for having a unification match against an unbeaten middleweight champion in Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., <laughs> Then following that up by beating an unbeaten challenger in Martin Murray. Compare and contrast Martinez's two most recent fights with Cotto's. Right? Austin Trout practically brought a blackboard into the ring when he fought Miguel Cotto. He won that fight by several rounds. Don't believe my scoring. Look at the actual scoring of the fight. By the way, that fight was in Madison Square Garden. This idea that Cotto can lose in Madison Square Garden is part of urban mythology. Look at Cotto's last fight, Delvin Rodriguez. You know what? Delvin has had some losses in his career, including a bad loss to Austin Trout. Right? I would argue that Martin Murray and Chavez Jr., are tougher opponents than Delvin Rodriguez. And even in the Delvin Rodriguez fight, you need to ask yourself, why wasn't Rodriguez given a chance to recover by the referee? I know he looks hurt when he goes down. I'm sorry, I'm old school. I thought you were supposed to have 10 seconds to recover. 
Why did the ref give Rodriguez no time to recover? Do we know what would have happened had Rodriguez had an opportunity to clear his head a bit? I know Cotto dominated in the fight, but this wouldn't be the first fight where we saw a guy get some early knockdowns and then look bad. Think Gabriel Campillo against Tavares Cloud. Right? So, just to sum up, my initial thoughts on this fight, I like Sergio Martinez. If he's still Sergio Martinez and not a guy with a bum knee, and keep in mind, the most recent surgery was for a torn meniscus. We're not talking about a torn ACL. Right? If he's still Sergio Martinez, I would expect him to look like a guy polishing up his legacy, which I believe 10 years from now is going to look awfully impressive. Right? Uh, I like Sergio Martinez to win this fight. Hedge with Cotto by knockout. I'll concede. Cotto has a punch. If he lands that left hook, maybe he can put Martinez down. Right? I'll concede Cotto has a puncher's chance. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.